You need to set your own VPN up. You want the privacy, don't you? You want to be private on the internet. You don't want people snooping on you. You don't want anyone knowing what you're doing, so you need a VPN. We're going to use WireGuard today. Why are we going to use WireGuard and not something more popular like OpenVPN? Well, WireGuard is the new hip kid on the block, and he's hip for a reason. WireGuard is built into the Linux kernel, which is what we're going to be installing it on. Therefore, it runs super fast. It's seamless. It works really well. There's no complicated configuration, unlike OpenVPN, where you've got masses, massive config files. All you need to configure WireGuard is the address, a public and a private key. It's amazing. It works a bit like SSH. You share your keys. Uh, just with WireGuard, you need to do a bit more firewall configuration and stuff, but we're going to use a fancy tool that will do all that for us and make it very easy and fantastic. Let's jump right into it. So first of all, you need a server. If you haven't got a server, get one. Watch this video here. It will take you less than 10 minutes, I promise, and it will cost you about under a dollar to get your own server, right? Real cheap. So once you've set up your server, SSH into it, like I've done here, my more vim, more gym server. See, I'm connected to it as root, so login as the root user. Uh, and then you want to open the description and go to this website here, which is the installer we're going to use for WireGuard. This installer will take care of the finicky configuration for us, like uh, port forwarding rules, so uh, our, our server can talk to the network, uh, kernel module configuration if we need to, and this will work on your distribution here. So I've actually um, forked this from the original and added Rocky Linux support, which is if you followed my guide, you'll be following. It already has Alma Linux support anyway, so Alma and Rocky are uh, the same. So I literally just added an if statement in there. Uh, I should fork it upstream, but use this one for now. So yeah, and on this web page, you'll want to click this WireGuard install.sh file, uh, and then click raw like this. So we just want the script, okay? And so then we're gonna copy that URL, uh, and then we'll wget that file, like so, just to download it. And now we have WireGuard install.sh saved. There you go, WireGuard install.sh, cool. Now we need to make this executable so we can actually run it. So to do that, we use the change modification command. We add the executable flag to it. So plus X plus executable. These commands, they're this way for a reason. WireGuard install.sh, there we are. And then if we do it, wow, it's color coded. Oh, Linux is so good. Sorry. Uh, and then we just want to run it. Okay. So to run something in the current directory dot slash like this, WireGuard install, bam. And it will take us through it. This is my current IP address. You don't want to change that. Um, leave it default with whatever yours is. Public interface, if zero, again, that's the default. Wireguard interface, yep, WG0. Wireguard server IPv4, so this will be like the internal addressing for your VPN. Just leave this all as default. If You can change it if you want, just make sure it's a 172 or a 192 or a 10, the private IP addresses. They don't have to be, but it's better if they are. Leave it as default, just leave it as default. It makes things easier. Yeah, IPv6, fine. This is the standard WireGuard port, fine. First DNS resolver to use for the client. I like to change this to, um, so so for DNS, I actually like to put quad nine in there, which is like a, um, it's, meant it's a bit more secure than usual. And it's it's a not-for-profit DNS server. So you know, they're not really gonna sell your data, but you can just put whatever, you put your ISPs one in there. I'm not actually sure what the default is here. I guess this is just the one the server uses, but I'll also just put Cloudflares in as a backup. Okay, that was all I needed. We are ready, okay, so. We're gonna get a client now. So it's gonna install all the packages we need. It'll do this for whatever distribution you're using. And then it's already set the server up. So now we need to set the um, client up. This error this error doesn't matter for us at the moment, but so I'm gonna just gonna call it Terra2 because that's what my desktop is called. Uh, sure, that will be its internal IP address. Uh, there we go, okay. So that generated, so that generated, you saw there was a QR code there as well, so we could scan it if we wanted, but that generated this code here, wireguardclientterra2.conf. But let's have a quick look at what that did on our server. So this made this file here, Etsy WireGuard, WireGuard zero, right? And this is the configuration. So all we did was basically automate this config, right? You can see it's a bit grim. Um, you can actually connect to my server if you know this. I'll remove this configuration once this video releases, don't worry. So you don't wanna share any of this with anyone, but you can share public keys. So this is the client here that we made. And let us have a look at the uh, client file. So you'll see our client has its own private key here. And our client's peer is actually the server. That's how it works. So there's no actual server, it's peer to peer. So, so we can check WireGuard is running by typing the WG command. It's not running. So we can WireGuard, we can start WireGuard with WireGuard quick like this, and then we need to uh, up. So if I just run that, so up, down, and then the config file. So WG quick, up, and then our config file it, or our um, interface is called WG0, WG0, like that. 
There you go. So it starts WireGuard. We can type WireGuard and we can see it's running. Um, if there's something connected here, it'll tell us. So let us take this file. So if I get this, this is the config file for our client. Copy it over to my client. So now I'm on my desktop, which is the client. Uh, you need to install some packages first. So I installed WireGuard on Fedora. I installed WireGuard tools. Um, just find a WireGuard client. Um, WireGuard tools is probably the package name for you, you as well. That will likely have created Etsy WireGuard. If not, just create that directory. Uh, ignore those files in there. And then we want to put in our configuration. But we're going to call it WG0 because that's the interface we're going to use. Uh, and then we just paste in our configuration from the server. There we go. Very easy. Uh, and now we can start it. So WG quick up WireGuard 0. Okay. Uh, and then if I type WireGuard, we can see we've got a peer. This server is now, this connection is now broken because we're on a VPN. You can see in the bottom of my screen, it's giving me an IPv6 address. Very cool. So let, let me just SSH back into the server now. If I run WireGuard here, we've got a peer and we can see how much we've sent and received, okay? Let me just prove to you that this is working. So if I come here, this was my, oh, this is my current IP address here. And then now that I've turned my VPN on, if I refresh this page, there we go. So you see we've changed it. We're in more Vim, more Jim. We are fully connected to our VPS, which is in, we host it in England. Um, and again, what's even cooler is if we were to check our WireGuard config quickly and figure out our internal IP address. I didn't have to do that. So if we check our interface here, we've actually got one. So this is on our server. And you see it's got this public internal address. We can, from our desktop, this is the desktop, let me, there you go, color-coded. So from our desktop, we can ping this now, which is an internal address, remember. But what's even cooler is I can actually SSH to it as well. Um, yeah, so it's complaining because I've changed the IP address. Um, but so we now, we're now connected, and look, we're connected from the internal address, not from the external address. So it's given us internal connections as well, so you can host things on that server. But more to the point, we now have a VPN. Very, very easy. If I want to disconnect from the VPN, so let me just show you. So if I go WG, you see this is the amount of data we've sent, latest handshake, all that. Uh, so I can just go, you need to do sudo wireguard quick down the interface, WG0, like that. There we go. Uh, if I run, <laughs> it's disconnected. If I SSH back into it and run WG, none of this is increasing and the latest handshake will just keep increasing because we're not connected to it, right? Same way if I want to stop the WireGuard server on the server, I can just do this, WireGuard quick down WG0, like that. And now I won't be able to connect. So if I go WireGuard quick up WG0, unable to, and run and test it, you see it's not working. So we've actually lost internet now because it's trying to, our, um, we're trying to send data out of this interface, but there's no endpoint, it's just, breaking it so it's going nowhere look so if i refresh the ip page it will just not work right no it's stopped refreshing there um so we now have no internet so we've got to tear that down like this and then we've got internet again so we're going to want this to start and boot and to do that we need to use system ctr so let's check we can even start it with system ctr so if it's up bring it down uh mine is not up uh but we go system ctl start WG quick, very odd, at whatever interface it is. So mine's WireGuard 0. And mine will fail. Um, and mine fails because there's a weird bug. I don't know. You might have this. And if you do, here's how to fix it. If you don't, great. Um, look, it says cannot find etsywireguard.conf. EtsyWireGuard, this took me forever to figure out, by the way. EtsyWireGuard, it does exist. So I was like, oh, what's happened? Uh, turns out. If we look in um, Etsy WireGuard, you see this the actual directory, the parent, doesn't have um, an executable bit. So we need to set that um, so things can go inside the directory and, and read things in it. Or they want, you know. So to do that, we just want to again run the cha change mod command, uh, and then we want to do 700, uh, which is just what you need. This doesn't have log. You could do plus X, but that would give it to like every user, well, that'd be fine as well because it would just give it to root, but whatever, we're doing it this way. Uh, and then if we ls, again, you see that's given that this x bit here and hasn't changed anything else. If we did plus x, it would also give executable bits to um, 
well, only root and root, but that's fine. Um, so this will have worked now. So we can now do, if we try and run that again, start, it started our VPN and we check the status. Our VPN is up, uh, it's running and can we connect to it? This will kick us off, but it will be worth checking. So I'm on my desktop here, sudo. You can do the same thing as well, systemctl, start wg quick at wg0. Uh, and now are we on the VPN? Yes, we are. Look at my IP address in the toilet. That's the IP address of the server. This will have broke, obviously. Um, so let us disconnect from that. Stop. So you can start and stop it with systemctl if you want. Now we're back because uh, SSH is brilliant and just remembers. But that's working. And then we can check, we can enable that on boot just like so. System, systemctl. Enable wg quick at wg0. Now if we check the status of that again, we can see it's enabled up here, which means that it will start on boot. So now our VPN will start on boot. Wow, magic. So that's how you set up a really simple VPN, WireGuard. WireGuard is great, We've, it will start on boot now. So basically, this ain't gonna do much for my server. Uh, it, it, there's a very low, it, it's not gonna cost my server anything to have this running. You, you might as well have it if you have a server, why not? One more thing to point out very quickly is that if we want to put this, say, on a, a laptop or another phone, or, or on our phone, because there's WireGuard clients on mobile. Yeah, look, so there's a WireGuard app for iPhone and there's also, there, there's an official WireGuard app for Android and there is also one for iPhone. I believe these are official. Should we try and set that up? That'd be quite cool. Let's... I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna go all out for you guys. I'm gonna go all out. Just download the WireGuard app, and then whilst that's installing, I'm going to generate another client. So this is how we generate other clients. So we just re rerun the script again. This is why we used the script as well. So dot slash WireGuard install, right? And then we can remove it. We can revoke a user if we don't like someone. So you know, if I give you access because you you pay me money, um, I can revoke you. Uh, and but I'm just going to add a new user. I'll call it Mark Phone. Mark Phone. Yeah, whatever. And then that gives a really nice QR code, right? So I'm actually going to scan that with my phone's camera. Uh, let me just open the WireGuard app first. Very, very basic. Add a tunnel with the blue button. Oh, look, there's a scan from QR code button. I'm going to click that. Scan from QR code. Right, it even gives you a nice little command there at the bottom of how to generate. But, so I'm going to scan this QR code. Oh, it, it's worked. Add a tunnel name. More Vim, more Jim. More money, more problems. More Vim, more Jim. Okay. Added like that, I'm gonna turn it on. Is that just working? Has it worked? Am I sending data to it? Let's check, WG. It's this one. It's this one at the top here. We are sending, it just worked. Magic, okay. Let me check my IP on my phone. Look at that, look at that. Wonderful, that's instantly worked. That's really cool. <laughs> I'm amazed at how easy that was, okay. So there you go, that's how to set up WireGuard, really quick and easy, even works on your phone, multiple laptops, so you use this simple script here, uh, it starts on boot and just set it and forget it, right? There you go, that's how to set up WireGuard. Like, comment and subscribe to help the algorithm, yo, or I'll sniff your VPN traffic.